So I've been wanting to make a sea monster of some sorts for quite a while. I've also been watching a metric ton of The Mandalorian. I know I was a little late to the party, but I wanted to get caught up anyways. And there's a scene. You all know what scene I'm talking about if you've seen it. That involves a sea monster and a baby Yoda. So this is my take on a sea monster meets slash eats baby Yoda. Of course, the very first step is going to be making my sea monster. I've already made a big clay ring, and then I've attached these little balls of clay that I will poke tiny holes in, and these will be the gums that I'm going to sink my teeth into, which you will see in the not-too-distant future here. The arms, or digits, or fingers, or whatever the little graspy, tentacly things are, are just made out of some aluminium foil wrapped in clay and then I'll sort of shape them into kind of fingery clawy things and then place them equidistant around the outside of my ring. Now once I made them all and placed them in place I realized that they were a bit too big that they were actually going to be a bit too large for the space that I'm building the whole thing out of. So take my scissors and cut the tips off. So once the ends are cut off, I can place them a little bit better, which means it's not going to be quite as expansive as I had wanted, but that that's fine. I mean, the beauty of this diorama build scene is that you never really properly see the thing, which we're going to come back to a little later in the video, but it also means that you've got a bit more sort of artistic license, a creative license to kind of do what you want, as long as it's a spooky sea monster. And then to make the sort of webbing around the outside that connects all the digits, I've got this circle cutter that I had purchased to make cardboard cutouts, and it doesn't really cut cardboard at all. Like, it's too weak and flimsy, so you never get a perfect circle, but it works really well for clay, I found. So once I've got a nice pizza shape I'll pop that down in the middle and then sort of smooth it over so that it blends all in and has a nice, creepy, uh, starfish-esque look to it. And then it's on to giving a little bit of texture and design to the whole thing. So I'm going to roll out a whole bunch of little noodly clay wetums. And then I will stick them down three to each of the tentacles. And then it's just a case of smoothing them, blending them in so that I have kind of weird, creepy ridges going all up the arms. It's a slow process. And in hindsight, I wish I'd done it a little bit differently. But once it's done, it's, it's done and I never need to worry about them again. So, yeah. To add the texture to the web sections between the fingers. I'm just using the back end of my uh, ball stylus to give it a little bit of texture. This actually ended up looking great and I kind of wish that I had done the entirety of the digits doing it, but hindsight being what it is, I'm not going to think too much about it. Then the last thing I want to do is make sure that I lift the pieces that I've pressed down because I want them to be three-dimensional. I don't want them to sort of be just a flat, sad, starfish so i'm going to use a couple wedges shims if you will of aluminium to keep it up while it bakes then the last step will be dropping my creepy little mouth circle thing in place and then smoothing it out and then once i've attached it down and made sure that it blends in nicely with the body we can start adding all the teeth which are just spikes that i pre-baked so that i can squish them in without having to worry about losing the spikiness and it's just a case of put them all in and blend them in so they look kind of natural. At this point, I start to realize, like, I've made a truly horrible thing, which is the idea. But it creeps me out. Sea creatures and monsters give me the heebie-jeebies. And I realize that's not much of a statement because they're sea monsters. They're supposed to creep you out. But I don't know, something about the ocean, man. It just makes me very uncomfortable. So after I've baked and finished the sea monster, I'm ready to get on to making the sort of frame that it's all going to sit in. I'll use a couple pieces of 
Uh, this is just fairly thin foam core to contain everything, which will kind of not work out so great just because the resin that I'm going to use ends up heating it up and it kind of melts inwards, but we'll get to that a little later down the road. But to give it some texture, take out my trusty pile of garbage that I'm too much of a hoarder to throw away. And in there I found these awesome little, I think they were sushi trays at some point, but they look great. And with a little bit of paint on them, they will serve as like the frame around the top of the boat perfectly. The beauty of these also is that they've got little cutouts on the sides. So they line up really, really nicely. And if you do a little, uh, little DIY welding using some hot glue, you can stick them together really nicely so that they form a beautiful joint. And then all I need to do now is glue it onto the base. And then while that's sort of setting, I'm going to use a bead of hot glue all the way around the edge of it just to make sure that when I pour my resin in, it's not leaking out the bottom. The hot glue should theoretically be fairly invisible once you put the resin in. Uh, at least I didn't notice it and I've done this before, so it works pretty well. And then the last thing I want to do is add a little bit of texture to that perfectly flat surface and fill in the little corners where the pieces of plastic don't meet. Last step, of course, will be to coat the entire thing in a very thick layer of black Mod Podge. This will add that final bit of texture and it'll also make it easy to paint. Now the painting was, I think it was just raw umber. Like this was just raw umber, or burnt umber, one of the umbers, which I coated the entire metal body in and then painted the bottom of the water area in a dark, uh, sort of sea blue, we'll call it. And then a light dry brush over everything to highlight the edges, and the body's basically finished. And then we're on to painting this sea monster. So I knew that I wanted his mouth to be flesh colored, but I'd mixed up way too much of this paint, and I, I suppose I could have added it back into a dropper, but I thought it would look good if I covered the entire thing. So what you see is this horrifying fleshy mass which I immediately covered in a brown to give it sort of leathery, uh, a bit less of a disgusting look to it. Uh, the next thought was to go over it all with like a nice blue overcoat because creatures in the ocean might be kind of blue and then cover the middle mouth so that that's kind of water colored because you shouldn't be able to see into it. Then the last step was painting all the teeth and the little fingy digi claw things. And then once I'd gotten all that finished, I realized I, I really, really hate this color. So I'm basically gonna cover everything I've just painted in like a uniform greenish blue. And I think this looks so much better. And then I dry brush it with a bit more of a green because I was went back and watched some of the highlights from that episode. And it's definitely got like a nice sort of sea eel green look to it. So I've basically just gone with that. And I think it actually turned out really nice by the end of it, especially once I added in a wash to highlight all those little nicks and crannies and thingamajigs. Uh, it actually started to look pretty sharp. And now that I'm happy with that, a little bit of hot glue on the bottom or a lot of hot glue on the bottom, we'll hold it in place and we are ready to add the resin on top. But first, I just want to make sure that all these seams are sealed because the last thing I want to do is mix up a whole bunch of resin and have it pour out the sides where I haven't glued it properly. So I'll use a little UV resin just to really seal every corner that the hot glue hasn't gone into. Then we're ready to add the resin in. It's just pretty bog standard stuff here. Uh, you mix up the resin as you need. And then I wanted to give it a sort of murky, oceany color to it. And I also didn't want the spooky sea monster to be too visible because he's sort of like a, a like a spooky, not entirely visible thing coming out of the water. So to do that, I'm going to mix in a little bit of blue and a little bit of green to give it a nice ocean color, we'll call it. And then it's just a case of mix that up and pour it in. While we're waiting for the resin to cure, we're gonna get started on Baby Yoda. Now, depending how much you wanna do sculpting, you can do this in two ways, because he actually has, just before he gets et, his pod is closed, and you don't have to worry about sculpting Yoda, you don't have to worry about sculpting the interior of the pod or any of that stuff, you just make an egg, 
I mean, you could even use an egg. Like, originally I had thought about using, like, a quail egg, because that would be a perfect size. Then I realized that I have to get a quail egg, and, like, you can't just get a quail egg. You have to get a whole pile of quail eggs. And at that point, I just lost interest in the whole thing. I thought, forget it. We'll make a little ball out of aluminium and then cover that in my clay. And then once I've smoothed that out to a nice egg-like shape, I can sketch out where I want to chop the lid off because I want him just before he is at. So he's going to be looking down into the water, which means I'm going to need to make this hollow, which is why we put that aluminium in to begin with, because I knew once I've cut the little doorway frame thing off, I should just be able to scoop this aluminium out and have a nice hollow body to work off of. And once I've got all of the aluminium out of it, or aluminum as I've been corrected, you'll get quite a bit of texture on the inside. So just to smooth things out and make it a little bit more comfortable for our baby Yoda, we're going to add a little bit of clay on the inside and smooth that down. And then we can start sculpting in the details on the outside. And then we're on to making the kid. So this took me a few tries because I didn't appreciate just how hard it is to sculpt baby Yoda. Sculpting like adult Yoda isn't too bad because he's all naughty and gnarly and wrinkly and all that jazz. But so is baby Yoda. And it's really hard to not end up with like a fully grown Yoda by the end of it. But what I found helped is... I mean, once you get the ears on, you can really start to see it's Yoda instead of just like a really creepily proportioned old man. But what you need to do is make the eyes absurdly large and smoosh the tiny nose up so that he's a tiny, tiny little baby Yoda face. And then I've already made a body, which I've got peering up and over with his adorable little outfit, and then squeeze his head on, add a little bit of texture onto it all, and then you've, uh, then you've got what might be the cutest thing I have ever made. And then we paint the little guy green, do his sort of metallic body on the floating shelly thing, little bits of red here and there to highlight it, a couple little scratch marks, and then he's all set to be added onto our diorama. And here you see the biggest issue I had with the resin was I added the second layer too soon and it heated heated up, hotted up, got it got too hot and it cracked and formed a lot of bubbles. Which is a bit of a, a bit of a kick in the teeth, but what are you going to do at this point? I'm not going to I'm not going to remake the whole thing, so we'll just we'll, we'll make use of the bubbles and say that that's just him creating surface tension. Now, what you see me making here is a mixture of isopropyl alcohol over some clear silicone. So the same silicone you use to seal a bathtub or a sink or something like that. Mix it up in a fairly thin consistency for silicone, and then you can spread it everywhere like delicious, delicious life-ending jam. Then once I've got that coated everywhere, in goes Baby Yoda on the spooky monster head. And then as it starts to set over the course of the next 30 to 40 minutes, I'll take my stir stick and just sort of tease the top. And this will add a little bit of bump and wave and sort of activity to the silicone and gives it sort of a wavy, watery appearance to it. Then the last step before I call this a day will be to add a little bit of white sea foam and froth to where the monster is going to be coming out, as well as a little bit of splash effect to where his uh, claw thingies have protruded through the surface of the water. And then with that, we're basically done and we're on to the glamour shots.
as always, folks, thanks for taking the time to click on the video. My name is Adam, and if you would like to see this kind of stuff, drop me a uh, drop me a comment down below. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Now's a great time to do it. That way you never miss one of these videos. You can always hit the little bell icon. That will let you know when I drop a new fat build. Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll see you next week. Cheers. Thank you.